Hi, my name is Steve Faulkner. Welcome to Real Magic Review. And today I'm going to be reviewing Mr. Jennings Takes It Easy by Richard Kaufman. But before we do that, can you please like and subscribe, check out cardmagiccourse.com. That's my online card magic course. That's what I'm incredibly proud of. It's my baby. Have a look at it, but don't take my word for it. Read the testimonials, ask people who are members, uh, and everybody's very, very happy with their membership. So check it out, cardmagiccourse.com. Over 400 videos, uh, weekly live sessions that are also uploaded to the course. So have a look. Uh, right. Uh, this, you might be able to tell, I'm just, I can't believe it. It's, it's been a long journey to reviewing this book. Um, and it is only fitting that I'm reviewing this book on the hottest day of the year in the hottest office in the UK. Uh, it really is a belter. And so you're seeing shiny Steve today. But it is fitting because this is a book that has clearly been sweated over quite often for many different reasons. So I received this book quite a while ago. And uh, my rule for reviewing a book is you should read every single word with cards in hand, uh, or at least mostly. And it got to a point where I was thinking, if I do that, this book's going to be out of print by the time I review it. And what started to happen is I started forgetting the stuff that I originally took notes on. Because, you know, summer, kids off, um, isolating, things like that. It just wasn't going to happen. So I decided to take this a different way and read word for word half over half of the book. Um, I'm there. I'll show you in a minute. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm basically there. Uh, but you can see what's happened is I've taken there's so much that I wanted to say that, it, that this would have been a three hour review and I didn't want to go there. And I also don't want to do a two part review of this because oddly enough, because of the size of the book, it's actually harder to break down what's in it, of course. And actually reading what other people have said about it, it's, people have found the same thing. They've kind of said, look, it's pointless running you through everything that's in it because kind of everything's in it. So first of all, what is this? It is not what I thought it was going to be. I thought this was... A beginner's book in magic. No, I didn't. I thought it was a um, a kind of Larry Jennings self-working tricks book because I, I didn't read loads about it. I, I didn't want to. I don't like doing that. Well, I know that Kaufman's doing another Larry Jennings book, and this is a second of a trilogy that uh, Richard Kaufman is doing. One of them being Jennings '67, um, and then there's going to be one. Apparently, uh, Mr. Jennings takes it tough, and that's not uh, including, of course, the the Mike Maxwell. Uh, Classic Magic of Larry Jennings book, which is a different thing, which I love. It's, it's a great book, but it has its issues. Uh, so this is, it's kind of a beginner's book in magic. Larry Jennings said to Kaufman, he, he loved the Royal Road to Car Magic. He wanted it to take a similar structure, and it does, but it's very, very different. The Royal Road has uh, issues with it, which I mean, we all love it. The same, the same as uh, Classic Mar Magic of Larry Jennings and many books. You know, they've got great stuff in them, but sometimes you even go, I don't really quite get what that means. I can't visualise it, and there's not loads of illustrations. And importantly, the um, hand modelling in this book was done by Jason England. No better person, of course, to, to do that. So um, that's another thing this has got. And what it, what it really, really does is give you clarity, detail... In teaching that is second to none. It, there, I don't think there's been one time where I've kind of gone, I don't get what that means. It, it, and that's so, so rare. And it takes, it's a beginner's book as in it starts off with pretty much holding the car, you know, getting a break, all that, and that stuff. And the, the double undercut, triple undercut work, and then false counts. That's kind of all I did, the double turnovers um, and lifts. Uh, and that was more than half of the book. So you can tell with those things, we're talking about detail. And that really is what this is. As it says in the introduction, this isn't an easy... It, it, it kind of is easy, as in it's, there's a lot of easy stuff in it. But it takes that and very quickly takes you to a place of, right, it's not good enough that you just do this. We've got to go into detail with this. We've got to go into how do you hold a break, but how do you hold a break properly, which doesn't give away that the cards are there. And you know, I've talked about this a lot on my course, is that it's something that is woefully undertaught and something I've been guilty about under teaching because, you know, you read the book, just says, hold a break, fair enough. And we all think we've got great breaks. And then we see, you know, footage of ourselves and going on. There's a bit of a step there. And it's, so it's, it's all of that stuff. If you're going to do it, do it properly. Very much as, you know, Ben L's going into this a lot more now and a lot of us are realising that actually if we go back to basics and treat it 
as a very serious thing and not let our ego get in the way of, of not letting us go back to basics, we may realise we've got some work to do. And that was that's really where this book sits for me. Yes, it's great if you're a beginner, um, but it's very quickly going to take you into detail, detail, detail. And he is a man of detail. You, you read, it was really lovely to read the introduction by Tony Giorgio, uh, which incidentally there's a short piece um, which is written for the book, you know, a long time ago because this book was going to come out a long time ago it's been a really long process uh and then there was a, a piece written just before larry's death fr uh, from genie which is a piece about larry which is uh, kind of almost reads as an obituary obviously it's not because it was before he, he, he died but just really giving us an insight into his, his um uh, his relationship with di vernon how he discovered di vernon through stars of magic and and his approach to to card magic which was you know spend a lot of time on it and it says this great story about you know you go everywhere in his house where there's deck of cards in every room and you just practice practice this obsession i know we've heard this before from a lot of people but we sometimes hear it about people we don't see that um manifested sometimes but you you definitely did with with, with larry jones especially in his approach and his obsession with with these moves and getting everything just right so uh, what I will say about this is that it's pretty much got every move and most tricks you're ever going to want to learn. It's got versions of, you know, Paul Harrison Reset. It's got ambitious cards, spectacular cuts the aces, which I loved. I learned that with Cards in Hand and performed it, uh, which is great. It's got, it's got a whole thing on, um, on the Elmsley 2002nd aces. Oh, I'm going to get that wrong because I always get it with 1,000 seconds. Anyway. Uh, it's got a whole thing on that, different versions of that. So it takes apart things, not only the moves, but then the tricks that that are demonstrated. You know, there's a whole thing on ace assemblies, you know, gimmickless ace assemblies, and then he does bring gimmicks into it or gives you a version of the same trick with gimmicks. Um, and again, I went through all of these, and I will say that difficulty-wise, some of it is quite difficult. Like the, the, the double undercut, triple undercut, you know, the version he teaches is arguably more difficult than the basic triple and undercut. But I wouldn't say difficult, but you're going to have to work harder on it. And that could be seen as an issue, is that if you are a complete beginner and you go into this and you're doing things like holding a Verdenay's break, which is a lot of this double triple undercut stuff work uses, that's at the beginning a lot more tricky than just holding a thumb break. So my worry is that some people will get this, go out to the beginner's book, get into Verdenay's breaks and struggle with that and sort of not actually learn a version with the thumb break. And I think it's important to know that you can do that. You know, I've been doing thumb break, double undercuts, triple undercuts for years and it's fine. But again, this takes it one step further. It's not a criticism, but it's something that, it's kind of the only criticism there is really of going, well, actually, if I was a complete beginner, would I make the mistake of taking on some stuff that's, that is a little bit more difficult? And again, there are easy versions of nearly all the tricks. He says in the, in, uh, in the introduction that the, the point was that it's all kind of done with the moves that aren't the really difficult moves that take a long time to get. So there's no passes, there's no pass type turnovers, uh, there are no culls, there's no palming. So they're the sort of the, the moves that put people off when tricks require them. I think there's a couple of tricks that need a pharaoh, but only a couple in the whole book, which is arguably an advanced move. Uh, but there's again, there's a whole section on, on shuffling, there's, there's a <laughs> I call it a section, it's a quarter of the book or whatever, um, on miscellaneous moves. So you have got really everything in here, but I would say that within that there's some really difficult stuff. There's some double turnovers that are done onto the table, that there's a bounce turnover, that, I think that's what it call, it's called, that sort of bounces off your hands as you place a double down on the, t on the table, and that's within a whole section of how do you put a double on a table and, and make it so it, it doesn't look like a double, basically. So I know this is kind of going everywhere, but I'm giving you an idea of kind of the depth of this work. It is utterly incredible to me that this book's been made, not only because it's been made, obviously there's a lot of big books been made, but it's been made, you know, um, over a course of so many years where he said he's had to dip in and out of it every now and then because he's written the Delan book, which is, took over 20 years to write, and the Tenyo book, I think it's Tenyo, isn't it, took such a long, long time to write or, or was such a, a big project. So the fact that this has come and it isn't... It, there's nothing about this that makes it feel like it's been rushed out. And that's why I'm happy to read, you know, just more than half it and say, look, I know this is, and I've, I have scanned the rest of it. I know this is a great book because there's no way you, I know for a fact I'm not going to get the, read the rest of it and it's going to be rushed. This is clearly something that is 
means an awful lot to Richard Kaufman. You can read that in the introduction. He talks with such affection uh, about Larry Jennings, but also the process and the process of writing it. You know, he says that over years, Larry would send him cassettes and video. You know, I can imagine these old videos, VHS uh, cassettes of him talking about moves and, 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 and um, pouring over these these moves and how important they were that, that they're done right and they're not rushed out and you know you can just see the 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 work and the the heart that's gone into this book the tricks are all i would say either really good tricks on their own or really good study pieces for learning certain moves you know there's things like a quick equivocate which is not a great trick in itself but it's a great way of, of kind of okay i've learned that double now i'm going to or that move now and i'm going to bring that into this um i like i said the spectator cuts the aces if any kind of well-known trick you think of, there kind of will be a version in here. Um, and that's, again, why I'm, again, for two reasons why I'm not going to go for all the tricks. It's just really hard to remember them because there are so many. Uh, but also, there really is no point because we'll be here for, for too long. There's so much more to say. Look, I've got notes in front of me, and there's just so much more to say. The reluctant packeteer, I mean, the, 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 a good example, actually, of what this book does, it, it takes moves that you do that you might think oh, it's a bit of a, a pro it solves problems but properly solves problems so for example you know it's got a version of oil and queens in it which can use the hammond count the ham hammond count is a problematic move it's always got this moment where you know my way of dealing with it was to kind of break the count before it so it didn't look obvious and this has a version in it that just goes why have not it's such a subtle thing but it makes it completely um workable and and convincing as well so again, you've, you've got that and it solved that problem. It solved the problem, again, another great uh, example of what this book does. For years, I struggled, well, not for years, but because I didn't put loads of work into it, that's why I struggled with it for years. But there wasn't many tricks that used this. But you know, if you've got like four aces face up on the bottom of the deck and you've got to spread the deck for a card to be chosen that's face down on top of those four aces. So you hold a break above the four face up aces. Now for ages, I just couldn't do that without a little spread and a little flash of those face up aces. I just couldn't do it for in certain moves. It was just flashing every time because I had to. There was a trick where I had to spread right near them, and and after a while, I I kind of worked out a way of doing it. And then straight away, you know, quite early in the book, it takes that and goes right. You'll notice this happening when you spread. You might flash, and I go right. It's the first book I've ever seen that's actually said to me, you know, I'm, this seems like a simple thing, but there will be issues with this, and that's what it does. All these things that we kind of and I have this a lot on the course, people sort of beat themselves up and think, well, should I be finding this difficult? Because all the books haven't mentioned why this would be difficult. And this does. It kind of says, you might find this happening when you do this move. So what you want to do is you move your finger here, move your finger here, and that will stop that. And one final thing I'll say about this is the level of detail. I did say at the beginning, but I, I can't stress this enough. It knows, that, and that's why you know it's someone like Larry Jennings that's been through and poured over the, the move with cards in hand because he knows exactly the issues of these moves because he's had them himself and not just in performance. You know, he says he, he prefers to fool magicians because if you can fool magicians, you can fool anyone. So that was his real passion. And of course, he fooled lay people as well. But as he said, it's kind of easier to do. And it is, you know, if, you, if, if you've got all the moves, as he also said, which is why I love it. Uh, you should know a lot of moves, you should have a lot of tools, because then you can do a lot of tricks. And um, and we stop getting bored um, if we do that. But the level of detail is just second to none. And the repetition, which is really important. You know, if you drop want to drop into this book and not read it from page to page, it will reference where the original move from a trick is taught, but it will also say go through it again. And I found that repetition really, really important, especially, you know, you, you, there's a double undercut, switch move, you know, swap the... the transpose the top and the bottom cards. There's one that gets the chosen card to the top while putting the original top card to the bottom. All these things, and it keeps repeating how to do this so you don't constantly have to go back and forward. And I think that's clearly deliberate and very, very important. Um, and even when you come across something like a swing card, it will talk you through how to do that again. So that's where it is really good for beginners. So uh, great teaching, great illustrations or photos, brilliantly done and it just answers it takes you know it takes tricks that were in you know the classic magic that I struggle with you know back in the day and just clarifies them and not just all the tricks from that you know all the tricks and clarifies them gives you versions of them that solve problems and I think it's a absolute belter of a book this is it's real it's a real achievement and something that should be 
celebrated and known about, which is why I wanted to get this out before it's too late and, and it goes out of print and it still might go out of print. <laughs> it might have gone out of print today. You never know. So any questions, let me know. We will talk about this on the lo next live session and we can talk about it on any live sessions, but this is a Monday now. Obviously, a lot of you are going to be watching this in the future, but watch the, the there'll be a live session about this because I, I can't even scratch the surface. So uh, Mr. Jennings takes it easy. I'm really looking forward to taking my time and reading the rest of it. Uh, great book, and uh, thank you for Richard Calvin for giving me this to review, but also thanks for writing it because I think it's it's a deeply important piece of work. Uh, so thank you very much. Please like, subscribe, check out carbmagiccourse.com. Be safe. It's very very hot for an English person in this room. So sorry about the shininess. Have a good one. Bye bye.